And how you guys doing? Welcome to this edition of Morisaka Madhouse Morning Mayhem. We got news coming out of Florida. A Mongol was captured. Had to do all about that Colorado deal. We're going to be talking about that. Couple uh, serious incidences, loss of life coming up first. And it's a sad state of affairs, sad state of affairs. Later on in the second half of the show with China Dow, we're going to be talking about some of the most dangerous jobs in the United States. But first, we're going to go over to, what is this, Local 10 News. And it has to do with uh, troopers on alert. After hundreds of motorcycle riders swarm South Florida roadway, sad state of affairs. Here we go. Florida roads this weekend in Pinecrest, a group creating traffic problems on Saturday. At least 300 motorcyclists swarming the streets in the area of Northwest 173rd Street and 57th Avenue as they made their way down to Southwest 104th Street and US 1. Florida Highway Patrol says troopers will continue to monitor this area and will remain highly vigilant in an attempt to stop illegal behavior. You know what? I don't get it. Why do they always got to call them motorcyclists? They are not motorcyclists. They're not bikers. They're looking like, you know, they're enjoying themselves. Personally, I have my thoughts on ATVs, UTVs, on public roadways. Not like this. They're acting all fool and stuff and make himself, you know, worse than it should be. But don't call them bikers. Don't call them motorcyclists, please. Anyway, here's the sad state of affairs one. One killed in crash involving motorcycle and a semi-truck. Sad state of affairs. So getting a deadly crash involving a motorcycle and semi-truck. This happened just after 8 o'clock last night on East Highway 71 near Del Valley High School in Birch Drive there. Austin Travis County EMS says the motorcycle was trapped under the semi. One person died in that crash. We'll bring you updates as we learn more about this collision. Man, sad state of affairs right there. Uh, one killed in crash involving a motorcycle and semi truck. It's a bad scene when that happens. Uh, I remember down in Daytona. We were riding off the main uh, strip, the main highway uh, back from Oscala. And uh, what is it? Two of them veered off and hit a semi. It was not cool at all. Our thoughts go out to the family, man. Sad state of affairs. Now a good one kind of here. Uh, let's turn this mute down, man. I don't want to hear about Russia and all them stuff. Uh, groups head into onto Lake for motorcycle ice racing. That is some cool stuff. I got to see this. I know it happens up north from where I'm at. Uh, actually, my SIL, my sister-in-law, she's getting about eight inches. My daughter's way up there and getting about 15 inches. And me sitting here in the cold, haven't been able to use the tractor and plow I got, but twice this year, all angry about it. But anyway, Southingham, some people have found a way to make their fun during these cold winter months. I'm actually getting a bunch of cabin fever right now. I've never experienced it like I have this year. For the last decade, a group of friends have been coming to a lake when it's frozen enough to do some ice racing. They're crazy, man, them people. But it looks fun. Flat tracking on freaking ice. Gotta love it. Quote, winter is, it's a way getting through it and enjoying the weather. That according to a lake owner, uh, Jim Soletis, they also get a lot of freaking good snowmobiling up there, but around me, they're selling their snowmobiles like it's uh, candy because you can't use them. Just 12 inches of solid ice separates the racers from a frigid lake bath. Quote, this is like few and far between sometimes because there will be several years where we won't be able to ride because it's not thick enough. If you don't have at least six to eight inches of ice, I wouldn't even try it. Hell with that. I'll watch from the sidelines. Get my ass out on a lake and fall through. Uh, let's see here. Dan Gideon has been racing motorcycles since he was three years old and is a former professional American flat tracker. Hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. Can't wait to the new season coming up. It's going to be pretty cool. 
when they live stream, we're going to be able to share it on our Facebook, so you'll be able to see the races over there. Uh, let's see here. Uh, a friend got him into it. He's not with us anymore, he said. The bikes are custom modified for the track. Well, these are motocross bikes that are lowered with special tires with screws in them. We make or buy them with Thunder so we can get close to each other. We don't rip our legs off. But uh, good stuff right there. Freaking awesome. I got to see that one of these days. It's on my bucket list. There's an update here from the Austin Daily Herald. Uh, Fire Ravages Austin Motorcycle Shop. Sad state of affairs. Uh, our firefighters, we support 1,000% here at Insane Throttle. From three departments responded to a fire that ravaged an Austin motorcycle shop Thursday. The state fire marshal was on scene Friday morning at MD Customs to determine the cause of the fire, which results expected to come back earlier next week or this week. According to the Austin Fire Chief, Jim McCoy, Austin firefighters were dispatched to MD Customs in the 1100 block of 5th Place SE late Thursday at around 335. Wonder if it was, you know, something with welding. You know, that's some stuff you got to be careful of those tanks. He goes on to say when we arrived on the scene, there was smoke showing. The reported fire was in the basement. When we made entry, there was some questions as to the integrity of the floor. At that point, we went on the defensive. Uh, it, you know, by then, the uh, flames engulfed. Thank God there wasn't no injuries, though. Auto shops, motorcycle shops, any kind of shops, you got to worry out with the welding equipment. You really do. Main story today out of the Tampa Bay Times. Um, Let's see, it reads, Motorcycle outlaw wanted in Colorado killing arrested at a Tampa clubhouse. And this has to deal with Gregory Moore Jr. He was ex uh, extradited to face charges that he and other Mongol uh, motorcycle club members killed someone. Article by Josh Fiello, uh, and that was updated about five hours ago. Uh, outlaw on the run after the shootout was arrested in Tampa last month at a clubhouse. Uh, Gregory Moore Jr. has been extradited on more than a dozen charges, including first-degree murder. His arrest came as part of a sting that took uh, down 10 members of the, we covered this one, of the Mongols Motorcycle Club in the shooting death of a rival gang member and serious injuries to others, a bar fight in the Denver suburb of Arvada, Colorado. You can see the initial coverage again over on our YouTube library. Uh, then it goes into what happened. Uh, the fight between the members of the Hells Angels and Mongols broke out at a roadhouse and it escalated into a chaotic scene. Hells Angel member Willie Kelly Henderson, 43, was killed during the shootout. Three other people were injured. It talks about a musician who was not associated with either motorcycle club and was on a break, uh, according to a GoFundMe page set up to help out for his medical expenses. It goes into the fundraiser, and you can learn more on this story. Of course, it goes U.S. Justice Department. Consider the Mongols the most dangerous outlaw motorcycle gang in the country, so they're pushing that angle in it, of course, in this article. And they talk about how they're the largely uh, a West Coast group. So you can take a look at that. Again, all are in the description box for the news. Bad state of affairs on uh, the beginning one with the motorcyclists uh killed uh under that truck that's a horror of a freaking sight uh semi against a motorcycle it really is it's a horrible sight uh not much left after uh the incident if you know what i mean because it just tears you apart you know you're going against 80 tons against you and your what 600 700 pound bike and you so you're not going to look the same, if you will. You're not going to look the same. Uh, Sunday on Rumble, the HNC show, 
we're going to be talking about the second amendment as well as as well as other stuff related to prepping the atmosphere of the world right now of course you got that russian ukraine stuff happening we're going to be talking a lot more about that that show is just on rumble again just on rumble because we've been asking where it is where you put it on rumble that way we can have a little more freedom with the politics than you can on the other ones uh alt tech is really starting to grow and we're really looking forward to that channel growing with it so don't forget to go over there we're going to listen to a music break we're going to have china doll in here we're going to talk about some dangerous jobs in the united states and boy you really got to look up to some of these guys and gals that do this job because without them we wouldn't have much of anything going on in this country we have the bravest workers around we'll be right back after this one <laughs> 